Good art usually makes you think. Nice. It's nice. Sometimes it makes you feel. Wow. But today we look at one art form so powerful it actually affects your tax rates, your local schools, and how many potholes there are in your street. It begins with redistricting, a political process where states use census data to redraw congressional districts. But when politicians get artistic, using precise line work and staggering feats of creativity to draw districts that benefit themselves and their party, that's gerrymandering. Critics say gerrymandering undermines democracy, but let me ask you this. When have critics ever understood good art? They didn't understand Van Gogh. They still don't appreciate the genius who painted this cautionary masterpiece. So what makes you think they'll suddenly understand the genius of the Illinois Fourth, which clumps Latinx voters from very different neighborhoods in Chicago, but does so by delicately employing a daring amount of negative space? Some states use independent commissions to redistrict, which is supposed to be a fair process, but let's be honest, just leads to endless Rothko's where we're all like, we get it, you know what a square is. 33 states let politicians create districts that are only limited by their own imagination. That's how we get this stunning piece, the Ohio Fourth, which weaves together conservative areas bordering three different liberal cities and does so looking like a Cubus duck. The jaw drop comes in in how it bends perception, creating a reality where Republican Congressman Jim Jordan continues to be reelected by excluding most of the voters that don't like him very much. It's unbelievable, the stuff they do with paint, huh? To be clear, both parties gerrymander. Democrats created Maryland's third, which like any good piece of abstract art makes you wonder, what even is shape? But right now, gerrymandering is perhaps the only art form dominated by Republicans, except for maybe political t-shirts. Their success is largely because they prepared for the 2010 census results by creating this avant-garde masterpiece known as Red Map. A post-impressionistic composition that envisioned a grand old country made up of countless smaller red districts. It's like a Seurat dot painting if a painting could take your health care. To make this map a reality, they went all in on winning local elections, specifically in states where they then control redistricting. It's created such an advantage for Republicans that even when Democrats won back the House in 2018, Red Map kept them from winning an additional 36 to 40 seats. Gerrymandering is in a bit of a golden age due to the fact that it's gone postmodern a word I don't actually know the meaning of, but I've heard enough time to generally get its whole vibe. Advanced mapping software and algorithms mean districts can be drawn with incredible precision without ever looking like North Carolina's 12th for the years that looked all abstract expressionist. But it's a particularly important time to understand the art of gerrymandering because states are using last year's census to redistrict now. So we're gonna get to see the gerrymandered gems that future curators aren't gonna shut up about. Gerrymandering. 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 This is clearly a gerrymandered district. We've already gotten a preview from Texas, which grew by over 4 million people. People of color made up over 95% of that growth. You might know 95% by its other name, almost 100%. The state will have two new districts and you'd think at least one should have a majority of people of color, but neither do. Republicans control the redistricting process and they've drawn the rest of the new map so that they can easily win two thirds of the state house, despite the state being pretty evenly split along party lines. Because Texas conservatives love surrealism. Just because something is one way in real life doesn't mean you have to depict it that way. Get a load of this. Here's what's crazy. The GOP could win the house in 2022 with gerrymandering alone. Usually art takes a while to appreciate and value, but drawings like these are already some of the most valuable things Republicans have. Even the term gerrymandering comes from a piece of art. A political cartoonist back in 1812 pointed out that a creatively drawn district looked like a salamander. And like, I do see it, but as far as interpretations go, it's like, 
pretty basic, but it was a different time. The district was signed into law by then governor of Massachusetts, Elbridge Gary, and not coincidentally, it gave his party an advantage in the state. The title of the cartoon mixed the name of the governor with the creature, and here we are, the gerrymander. 